Hello everyone, and welcome back to our original Spec Evil series, where alien life evolved from metal and non-organic materials. Being the fourth installment of this series, there are some terms I will not be explaining, so if you are new here, please consider checking out the rest of the series too. And now, without further ado, let's get started. The emergence of death among the life forms of Cydus, closely followed as it was by the evolution of predation, led to a massive diversification of life, led by the forces of evolution and natural selection, and giving rise to what our experts have termed the kinecobiotic era, or the era of predators, 2500 million years into the planet's history. As these life forms adapted to each other and the constantly changing conditions of their environment, the very first ecosystems would form on this planet. The first of these ecosystems is the lens forest, relatively small pockets of greenery that populate the warmer regions of Cydus. These are characterized by the presence of tall forms of Lentarboria, their lenses growing wide to catch as much light as possible in order to keep functioning effectively turning them into analogs of our world's trees. While the impulse to obtain greater amounts of energy is certainly pressing, what truly led to the evolution of these organisms was the development of advanced nucleating crystal capsules. As evolutionary pressures mounted, many of these organisms developed capsules covered in magnetic compounds that attracted these structures towards metal-rich areas, as well as towards each other. This greatly improved the chances of these capsules, giving them access to much more resources which would allow them to grow into these mighty organisms. However, wherever there are resources and primary producers, predators are bound to arrive. These are the green-spotted yarans, massive lensivores that evolved to feed on this tall lentarboria. With their lenses being the most fragile structures in the whole organism, they are an easy and readily available source of food for many lensivores. Their paired, shorter appendages will keep them stable as they feed, while the longer one will allow for an extremely quick burst of speed should any predator approach. Still, not even their huge size will protect them from everything, as we can see here. This enormous lensivore is being attacked not by a huge hunter, but by a tiny thief, the Oleoraptor. This tiny parasite, like many others, will use its huge beak-like mouthparts as a wedge to pry open the protective plates of other organisms, using its long feeding tubes to reach the already processed oil hidden in their inner tank. Their coloration, mimicking that of their host, prevents other individuals from removing them as they feed. Let us move on for now, and turn our eyes to a vastly different ecosystem the steel thorn thicket. Quite opposite to the lens forests, these regions are characterized by the growth of short pila speculum. Contrasting with the tall stalks of the forest lentarboria, pila speculum growth is much more limited by the greater amount of metal it requires, and so they have opted for much more aggressive means of protecting themselves. Sharp, hard spikes capable of harming the feeding structures of even the hungriest lensivores. Many species have even developed a chemical defense, needle-like spikes that release a highly corrosive substance, originally used to bore into the surrounding substrate in search of resources, but now a great asset in repelling predation. Life is not easy for such lensivores, as even trying to feed on some of these can cause a terrible fate to befall them. Oxymicrobia This microorganism will slowly, but surely, corrode the metal that makes up Cydosian lifeforms as it feeds. And, while the acid defenses of Pila Speculum protect it from oxymicrobial activity, the same cannot be said for its predators. In the future, many organisms will develop similar acid defenses to protect themselves from oxymicrobia, but that future is not here yet. After expanding enough, Oxymicrobia will rust its victim to a point where it can no longer move and feed, leading to its death. The rust will eventually corrode this poor being into nothingness. And, 
Even if rust and aggressive food were not enough, lensivores must also protect themselves from their own predators, such as this ram stalker. Its frontal limb has a much greater range of movement, and can be lifted off of the ground and pointed forwards as they hunt, depending only on the constant movement of the rotating limbs to stay upright. Their sharp, pointed tip will prove a deadly weapon when impacting the body of a prey, giving the ram stalker access to their own. As can be appreciated here, the advent of predation meant most oil processing organisms now have their tanks covered by hard protective structures, requiring their predators make a greater effort to access this oil. Oxymicrobia will then attack what remains of this organism, returning its composing metal particles to the ground below. Now we find ourselves at a shiny, if deceptively empty, expanse of land the chrome tundra. The predominant organism in this ecosystem is, fascinatingly, the chrome surface that covers everything. This is a very specialized form of Pila speculum, growing close to the ground, dedicating all of its resources to expanding horizontally. And expand it does. Its chrome surface, while costly, absorbs a huge amount of light, allowing them to overtake other organisms covering them completely and depriving them from sunlight. Should this organism keep growing unchecked, it could grow to consume the entire planet. We fear that, if this happens, in the future everything will be chrome. One of the very few organisms that thrive in this ecosystem is the scrub tank, a heavily armored mechanivore that walks around this tundra slowly scraping the chrome surface with its specialized grinding mouthparts, scooping up the resulting dust to feed. While too heavy to escape predation, its dense shield protects them well enough against any attempts at hunting them, leaving them to live a peaceful, easygoing life. And once they pass, they will be covered by the same chrome they feed on. Quite the contrast to this organism is the Skid Mirror, a fast-moving mechanivore that has learned to exploit the flat chrome surfaces to move faster than any other being at the time. Its front appendage has been elongated into a skate-like limb, its fast-moving legs propelling them across the thundra with ease, stopping only to feed on small patches of pila speculum. Despite its speed, its smaller size makes it easy prey for many predators. And so, the Skid Mirror has developed its large light-catching panel, used as a light detector by most Cydus lifeforms, into a round, concave reflective structure, which will reflect light towards any potential predators, dazing them or even blinding them as the Skidder escapes unharmed. Now we turn from the continental land masses to the coast, where the conquest of the vast all oceans has begun taking place. This process was started by the steel piers we are seeing here. Not much different from basal metallosoma, although their stalks are much longer, allowing them to grow above the surface of the oily seas. Next to them we can see the floating lens panels, much more adapted to this oleotic environment. Beneath every lens lies a small bladder, filled with gases that form Cydus's atmosphere. By growing far away from the land masses, these organisms have avoided competition with other light-catching organisms, a growing pressure as life extends through the land masses. The wading lensivore seen in this illustration, ready to feed on these floating carpets, has already begun adapting to life in this environment. Their rotating legs are paddled, allowing for faster movement in the oil, and their chemical intake ports are pointed backwards preventing oil from entering them as they dip their head to feed. While this oily sea still keeps it safe from predators, it won't be long until they adapt to these conditions as well, bringing the war for survival to a whole new battlefield. And the ways these organisms will adapt to their new environment will truly test the possibilities of life on this world. Finally, the last of the Cydosian ecosystems we shall be seeing for now, the Metal Canyon. 
The reason behind this place's name is plain to see. Extensive pile of speculum carpet the terrain. There are tall pillars emerging at regular intervals to catch the sunlight. However, in a world with predators, they can no longer content themselves with simply growing. They must also defend themselves. They have done this by forming a symbiotic relationship with vitro lumen colonies, their specialized lenses piling up one over the other to concentrate the light, creating powerful light beams capable of harming any organism that comes too close. In exchange, the pile of speculum will direct their own resources, as well as available underground oil, towards the vitro lumen, feeding it and allowing it to grow. Growing over the terrain, we can also see the lensways, similar in many ways to the steel piers, but not related to one another. The lensways will grow independent of the terrain beneath them, maximizing the amount of sunlight they can gather while keeping their sensitive lenses away from predatory animals. And, running along the canyons and cliffs of this region are the cliff jumpers. These are among the very first organisms to develop a fascinating adaptation that will change the game in future times. Springing legs. These jointed legs can be folded and unfolded at great speeds, effectively launching the cliff jumpers off of the ground, giving them much greater mobility and allowing them to escape predation. And one of their predators, constantly adapting to better hunt these kind of organisms, is the canyon spider. This life form is characterized by its four-axled body plan, which evolved through the joint germination of anomalous amounts of self-replicating crystals, giving this organism not only twice the amount of rotating limbs, but also a greatly expanded oil tank. This, of course, gives them a lot of mobility, as well as the ability to climb and traverse all kinds of terrain. And, while already impressive as it is, the four-axled body plan will have an immeasurable impact on the evolution of life on this planet going forward, fleeting as it may be. And that's it for this look back at our World of Metal series, likely the most expansive episode we've had so far. And you can thank our lovely patrons for that, since at first I didn't have a solid idea on how this episode would go organization-wise. However, once we got into the theme of ecosystems, I found it to be a perfect idea on how to work this one out. So with this, you can see how life has begun the process towards greater complexity, with evolutionary pressures more similar to those we are familiar with in our world, and thus beginning the road towards the insanity that will come later. With primary producers, predators, parasites, and a lot more things coming in the future, we will be seeing how life will have to fight for its right to party, survive, and how adaptations like those we are seeing in this video, including the rotating limbs, acid, lasers, and even more specialized weapons, will turn these ecosystems into something unlike anything we have seen in this world or in any other so far. As always, here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see more of this series. With a special thanks to the channel The HQ14, who made an entire video speculating on the future of this series and some special organisms we might see soon. And also, thank you to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships. And especially to Tayan, our new Patreon member. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support our channel, and you get some nice perks too like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me what kind of creatures you would like to see evolved in this world. Any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.